out into three, four pieces here. What I may do when I actually put the budget together, I may end up putting it all together. Mm -hmm. I don't really need to have a separate one. Well, I'm just wondering, I don't know, this is um, the dental health. I don't, see, I don't even know what this is. This and I don't is know if there's a, a disproportionate is. share of mental health services for high school students versus elementary students. It's allocated the... I mean, does that ever, is that ever happen? Where the state, so that's what I'm saying. So forevermore, the high school districts are going to have more expenses for mental health than an elementary. And the way you're funding it right now and distributing the balance, less expenses, high schools are always going to get less than an elementary district from this funding. Because they use more than our Right, yes. Because they use more than Well, they're, yes. they're just, forever more, though. They're just paying saying. for all of the services that they're getting before they get their allocation. I mean, they're paying for both of those services. They're paying for their fee-for-service. I mean, that's what fee-for-service is doing. It, it's like, instead of you keeping the money and serving the kids yourself, you're having a provider program mm -hmm. do that. So so that money comes off the top to to the provider, and which is exactly what we're what we're doing here. And Carolyn, the way to look at this is this is restricted funding. It's for mental health services. Mm -hmm. It's not like we could use it for unrestricted or use it for other programs. Mm -hmm. So it is paying for the services that are, yes, it, I understand what you're saying, but it is disproportionate based on you have more services. You're providing mm -hmm. students more than an elementary district, but this money is coming in just for mental health services, and it's assisting you to provide those services that you're providing more of. And currently, in the way that the um, state is allocating the funds, it's based on ADA. So that's what, what, so what we looked at doing, which is pretty much like 8602, for giving the money, showing you how you would get it if it was based solely on, um, on ADA, and then we're making the adjustments. So we're doing the same thing. So like, say, for Chafee, you're initially, you'd be getting $789,000. Out of that $789,000, you're gonna be paying basically for the counseling, the, the admin costs, the facility, and any contracted counseling, and then you're gonna get the rest. So your, your allocation is still your $789,000. You're just paying for these services that are being provided before you get what's left over from what you bought. Does that make sense? Right, and what I'm saying is, do you high schools have a tendency to have higher costs than an elementary? Because in that case, the mental health funding that is left over that I'm going to get okay. is always going to be lower okay. than some other I, school. I, and, I, and so that's what I'm saying. So why not take the expenses off the top and then allocate? And I don't know if it makes a difference. That's all I'm, I'm so just breaking that up. So basically what you're saying is in column O, instead of, instead of distributing the remaining funds After expense. based on ADA, do it based on something else. No, she's basically saying it could be that, uh, it could be that way, but the expenses come off the top. But that's what this that's what's happening. No, 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 because you're, you're you're distributing it first, and then you're taking expenses. I'm saying if you take the expenses first, but not not, not by the well, we're not distributing the money. We're not distributing the top. Oh, you're not. Just what like about people, column just like, like, oh, What is column O? Or column O is where we'd be distributing money. Right, and that's after expenses come out. That's what I'm saying. Could I, jump I in think so that there's a kind of what I just here, said. Car Carolyn, too, because um, we took off all the residential costs off the top, and that is the most costly item, and that is where it very clearly is um, adversely affects districts that have high school age students. Mm -hmm. um, I think, you know, based on our last year's experience, all but one student was high school age. So, um, yes, the hut. So we kind of tried to look at the equity within this and said, you know, yes, residential falls primarily to high school age students. Very few, you know, elementary or middle school kids are in residential care. And so we kind of took that off the top. Now here, the other costs, you know, are are being taken. Um, not off the top from the distribution, but they're allocated based on usage. And then, um, you know, and those are the individual counseling services. And I mean, we have students as young as kindergarten, first grade getting individual counseling. So um, I don't know, I would have to go back. There's been 
patterns of dis difference more by district than by age. And I really haven't, I have to say, I did not analyze by what grade level our counseling services are provided. Um, but certain districts, uh, like Ontario Montclair, makes very few referrals for self-counseling historically because they ask their school psychologists to do counseling services. Other districts never require that of their school psychologists. And so they just automatically skip that step and refer to self-counseling. Uh, I think Kukumanga District actually has a contract with West End Family and, um, and they may want to relook at that uh, and take out their special ed kids from that contract, although, you know, because of your Medi-Cal reimbursement, you, you know, it works pretty well. Um, you know, so historically, they have never referred very many students, not because of the age of the student, it's because they have another source for services. Yeah. So, I mean, I think that we, we try to take into consideration in this model the fact that, yes, um, you know, as students age, mental health disorders do become more pronounced and require higher levels of care. Now, the, the services on, under I, column I, these are services where um, the counselors that are employed by the SELPA uh, go to the school district and actually see the student for, um, you know, anywhere, sometimes like the younger students, they're paying the same fee, but they may be not seen for a full 50 minutes, um, only because they can't engage in that for that long. So it's based on the student's needs. Uh, we also suspect that um, now that we're seeing kids with higher needs, there may be some uh, need for options to see kids even more frequently. We usually see them one time a week. I know some of us also are needing to leave some of the, the director, PAC people, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, what I'm wondering about, and this is strictly my opinion, not, I'm out of the role of facilitators, is a lot of this discussion for right here is the kind of discussion that doesn't make sense to me. Um, so, so when we look at what part of the discussions we can give input to, I just don't understand it, uh, you guys, in terms of giving you input on it. So I'm just giving you an example. And I know you wanted our input on something today, I'm thinking, or opinion. Uh -huh. And I know Lori's got to leave. Uh -huh. um, I don't know about any of the rest of us. It's, it, it, it helped me recall, and I know Lori and I talked briefly, um, what part you would like to hear from us about how you do this. Well, you know what? I'll, I, um, since I've worked at the high school level and the elementary level, I, I thought this was kind of interesting, and I would agree with you. So what it is, Carolyn, for the high school level is it's a way of not being punitive, so to speak, because of the age group you're dealing with. So I think we've made a decision, or a proposed decision, to say residential is going to kill the high school districts if they don't get some support from us as a SELPA. So we're saying, okay, we're getting an allocation of money to deal with mental health, do we just allocate it based on how many kids you have, and then let the high school? Gosh, you're going to go in the you're going to go in the red because you're not going to have enough money to cover all the mental health services that you have to provide at the high school. Or can we say residential? We'll all pay for that, sort of like a, like an expat model. They all grow up. But then when it comes to mental health services, second line, that you're really saying, okay, we really are going to allocate the money. Some of you are going to end up with more, probably because you're in elementary level, but at least the high school will have money to fund that. You still end up in the black, which is really a good thing. We take a hit a different way in elementary. When you talk, you weren't here for the autism and all that sort of stuff that we do as far as preschool. So it's, it's somewhat equitable, but this, I think, is an excellent way of doing it. If that's the and I mean, and even a, one residential placement could devastate in some of our smaller Absolutely. elementary districts. I mean, we're talking costs between 150 to 200 thousand a year, mm -hmm. and that's not counting our, you know, the other support costs that go into it, you know, like parent travel expenses and um, our residential travel expenses and um, that 
much. So. I have a question on the county's allocation. Because it's by ADA, I understand. But when a child is referred, whether it be residential, whether it be the permanent presence, is it the county that's doing the referral, or is it the district? Should the county be giving an allocation of this at all, or are the costs actually go back to the district? The cost goes back to the district, the county. So let's say a student's at Gibson, so that because that's kind of the highest level of care we would have in the county program. Um, the Gibson staff feel it would be appropriate for the child to be in residential. They're not making it at Gibson. So the Gibson staff would discuss that recommendation with the director of the district. And then they would jointly come together for an IEP team meeting to make that recommendation. So um, once that recommendation is made, they're no longer, and they're placed in residential, they're no longer counted as a county student, and the cost would go to the district. You know, I do have a little comment about that. Um, over at Jordan Gibson, the, the county currently has a counselor that really is, that could be partially funded with this money out of the mental health. Mm -hmm. So the, that $27,000 could be applied towards that counselor's and salary. currently it's built to the district. Are correct. I assume correct. as a fee for service. No, that's not correct. It's not correct. No, no that's a fee for service, but it's service. on a counseling case. Okay. So you pay for that out of your allocation? Yeah. Because when Randy was here, that didn't come to pass okay. as a fee for service, so we never felt that we could bring it back. Well, we felt we could bring it back in as a kind of brought it back in as asking for a fee for service. Right. Yeah, well, it's good. not a unique fee for service, but it's still a cost of, from the county program. Sure. Sure. So Which is why they would need some we did, money. Yeah, to that, do. I want to make that clear that that SEC class, uh, just because you're at Gibson and receive that service, you're paying the same fee for service for an SEC class that you might be over on an OMSD site that doesn't have counseling. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Catalina, okay, I have a question. Yes. Okay. On this uh, first page draft, this one with all the okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, see if I get this right, because I may not. Okay. <laughs> um, if OMSD did not refer a single kid under this proposed plan, mm -hmm. we would not, if I look at that, those bottom set of columns, we would get charged the overhead admin regional stuff of 45. Mm -hmm. We'd have a portion of the facility. That, correct. Mm -hmm. And we would, and that would be it. We would get no other charges and we would get 638,000 allocated back to us. That's correct. Okay. I can understand that. That's fair. <laughs> Because we do serve a lot of our own kids, and we have. And see, and that, what that would do is that frees you up because you do not have, you're you're not currently contracting for any counseling mm -hmm. services. That's why yours is the minimal. Right. So you'd be, be able to use those funds for mental health services within your own district. So, Kathleen, was that based on the number of kids in counseling last year plus twenty five percent? Correct. Correct. Um, basically, we're looking at the recommendation that the caseload standard be 20 to 24 cases per counselor. Like I said, we are seeing kids that are more intensive, and also, um, you know, we used to refer kids who needed medication management to GBH. Uh, that was one of the primary reasons why it, that would be a, an appropriate referral for GBH. And now our counselors will have to do that coordination with the private psychiatrists. So, you know, there is a little bit more time involved. And is there a factor, John, and I don't know who would know this, but typically when you're staffing um, at, at the district level, you look at the suggested or contract average and then you figure in a percentage over that before you hire. Like, it used to be 1.06 or something uh, of the population. Once you went over 1.06, then that was another. Um, FTE that you would hire. Uh -huh. So do we have like, it, so the suggestion, and I'm just tossing it out if I'm crazy, the suggestion is 20 to 24 and when we get to an average of 28, that's when we start looking at uh, hiring another counselor? Or no, I haven't been doing it in that way. Okay. Um, you know, only because, you know, 
there's it's like, strictly informational. Though. Right. No, it's just as the referrals come in. I mean, if everybody already is, has their 24, they can't take any more, and then a new person 